I think the most important byproduct of the ban of the menthol cigarette is saving hundreds of thousands of lives of smokers who would perhaps quit, but the important thing is another generation of smokers who would never start. The health implications of that, in a positive sense, are tremendous. My recent book is entitled Pushing Cool, Big Tobacco, Racial Marketing, and the Untold Story of the Menthol Cigarette. And it's the history of how the menthol cigarette became such a controversial substance in American consumer culture and public policy, such that it is on the cusp of being banned by the Food and Drug Administration. Menthol cigarettes began their journey through American consumer culture as a health cigarette in the 1920s. Now, of course, there's nothing medicated about menthols, but it was sold as a kind of therapeutic break. And that was really the appeal of menthols through the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and even in the 1950s. The concern about the safety and the health of cigarettes had accumulated to such an extent that the industry was under fire from regulators to stop advertising, particularly to young smokers. And faced with the contraction of the youth market, industries like the makers of Cool began to look for growth markets and identify poverty markets as the new growth area. And what you begin to see in the 60s and the 1970s is this kind of intensive competition to garner and to control their black franchise. You start to see this intensive focus on urban billboarding, in buses, on trains, and in neighborhoods. I grew up in the Bronx and Queens where you could see billboards everywhere. It's this that starts to kind of generate local and also national objections. The history of how that market was created is not a history of a pull, something inherent to African Americans that draws them to mentholated smoking, but in fact, it's the product of a relentless and highly sophisticated push that is informed by studies of the social psychology of poverty, African American neighborhoods, and the product of a process by which the industry cultivates supporters in the black community to defend the industry against these accusations that what it's doing is deceitful and nefarious. The lasting significance of the book that I did is to create a kind of historical documentary base so that we understand who is really on the side of the health and well-being of black communities and who is silent about these issues and why. It will take many years for any decision that the FDA makes to take full effect. It will take many years before the legal and the political challenges associated with that decision subside. And so as long as that debate is ongoing, I suspect that a book on the history of mentholated smoking will continue to have a kind of purchase in the public policy debate.